All right, uh, moving on now. It is a sad day here on Wake Up America for the country, really. A somber day for millions of viewers. Today is Jen Psaki's final day at the White House. And as she gets ready to set sail literally off to MSNBC, I thought we'd look back at some of her greatest hits in today's Psaki Dodge. We're not going to outline them in more detail from here. I think I answered the question a little bit earlier. Well, let me give you a little bit of a different take on this. Uh, uh, you know, happen uh, as a result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Well, I think that's a re I think that's a relevant question because I think this is a politically charged, uh, harsh law. But more tomorrow. Let's do this again. I don't have a projection here on on on, on specifically what the inflationary impact would be. Go ahead. I'm not going to detail it further beyond what he said in the past from here. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. I, for one, am going to miss her. So we say bon voyage, Saki Daj. That's a sailboat. And she is <laughs> making her way off to MSNBC 225 briefings later. But of course, We've got to leave you with one more. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki was asked if the White House has a rough guess on how long the baby formula shortage is going to last. In today's final, <laughs> Saki Dodge. What we are seeing, which is an enormous problem, is hoarding. Uh, people hoarding because they're fearful. Uh, that is one element of it, and people hoarding because they are trying to profit off of fear, fearful parents. So that is also something we're focused on uh, taking efforts to track and, adjust, uh, uh, and address and, and look into. Well, there you have it. <laughs> R.I.P. Saki Dodge. We will miss you. I will miss you. We'll all miss her. Well, yes. we're going to, I don't know what we're going to do. That's a moment the right there. Dodge. Let's welcome in the powerhouse panel, get some reaction to Jen Psaki's final day at the White House. Joining us this morning, best-selling author and political analyst, fan of the Psaki Dodge, Mark Halperin. And here in studio, the former lieutenant governor of New York and Newsmax contributor and fan of the Saki Dodge, Betsy McCoy. Great to have you both on. Great to have you on on a Friday. Uh, Karine Jean-Pierre will take over formally on Monday. Um, Jen Psaki, Mark, how do we evaluate her performance over the last 16 months? Again, a total of 225 briefings. First of all, I, along with most Americans, mourn the passage of the Saki Dodge, but I don't see why it can't be revived when she starts her MSNBC show, where I suspect there'll be a different kind of dodging that you can feature. Mm. Yes, uh, good point. I, you know, she's she very qualified. She had a big ex a background experience briefing at the highest levels of government. She had a good relationship with the president. I think uh, she certainly had her moments of dodging, but she also, I think, did a lot of work for the administration. And I think they're going to quickly miss her as someone who knew how to do the job. And I'm not sure they've replaced her with someone who's going to have the same level of effectiveness for the White House. Yeah, Betsy, she may, uh, Mark makes a good point. We become competitors now. Um, but I agree somebody... because Mark, uh, uh, I agree with what Mark just said, because uh, her successor is already quite controversial for her off-the-cuff remarks, her imprudent remarks, bashing uh, various news outlets, uh, calling people racist. Yeah. The one thing you can say about Jen Psaki, she never lost her cool, really. She was <clears throat> very composed, very skilled at her Saki Dodges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was. She was, you know, my issue in the Dodge, I, I think, you know, if you're watching Wake Up America right now for the first time, the Saki Dodge began organically. Uh, it was, you know, my team, my executive producer one, say, one day said she just kind of dodged the question. Now, the job of the White House press secretary is a challenging job. Right. Um, but it, it is your job to, to be the mouthpiece for the administration and to be honest with the American people. And I think we always questioned how honest she yeah. was being. So we've got a couple options here uh, for Corinne Jean-Pierre. She, by the way, is 0 for 1, if you ask me, Allison. She was asked about the baby baby formula crisis a day ago, and she didn't have an answer. She didn't she know didn't. who the point person was. No. So her name is um, is Corrine Jean-Pierre. Okay, so we could go with the Corrine conundrum, the Pierre pivot. I the, like that. The Corrine Corrine. Mark, get it? Corrine. Corrine. Yeah. Corrine, right? Yeah. Or the Pierre yeah. pivot. That was Nan Hayworth's suggestion. Yeah, um, I like the Pierre pivot. I like it too. I, I like that Me since too. she first started it. Pierre we'll see how oh, we she have does. the Pierre punt as well. Yeah. It's a lot of alliteration in the teleprompter yes. right now. Um, well, look, she didn't know who the point person was. But, you know, to, to Jen Psaki, 
She dodged a lot of questions, but you do have to wonder what was going on behind the scenes and the difficult job that she had, because who knows if they're giving her information. Right. Uh, this is a very difficult administration because they, think about how many times they had to play cleanup when President Biden would say things and then they would go to her, the press conference at you know 2 30 Eastern and she's like, OK, well, well, what he meant by that was. So I do give her a lot of credit. She's held her cool, as Betsy said, and, and she had a very difficult job. Yeah, it's a difficult yes. job. But it is, it's the pinnacle of the business, um, yeah. is, is to be the White House. I, it really is. It, it's an honor to hold that job. Sean Spicer, um, who's got a great show right here on Newsmax at, at you know, in the afternoons, um, every day with Lindsey Keith, uh, I've asked him about this. And he's like, it's just, it is an honor to, to be in that room. It used to be the old White House swimming pool, by the way. But I always think this is interesting. And it happened with Kayleigh McEnany, Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Um, it happened with Sean. When you leave, you give sort of, exit interviews. And Jen Psaki, she's been all over the place the past couple days. She spoke with our own John Gizzi at the White House. Uh, but she said that those comments that Joe Biden made, and I thought this was interesting, Mark. So Joe Biden called Donald Trump the great MAGA king um, when he was at a fundraiser in Chicago a couple nights ago. Um, and he's been talking about this, this ultra MAGA crowd. Uh, Jen Psaki said yesterday that that's Joe Biden just having fun, that he's coming up with that on his own. And I thought that was revealing because I think for a while we thought that was just bad PR from some firm on Madison Avenue. No, but this is this is something that Joe Biden apparently is making up as he goes along. And maybe he's been doing that for the last 16 months, Mark. Maybe. Or maybe they're saying he made it up. Yeah, I don't think he made it up. I, but why would you? I thought that was Jen Psaki creating space between, you know, some of the comments Joe Biden has made and her new job at MSNBC. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, I'm not sure Joe Biden is as sophisticated an analyst of the MAGA movement as, say, Barack Obama is, but he certainly feels the pressure to try to salvage what Democrats might do in the midterms by being very partisan and polarizing and seeing if he can inspire Democratic turnout. But uh, I don't I don't know that uh, he's coming up with a lot of this on his own. Yeah. And and, and Jen Psaki's predecessor, by the way, Karine Jean-Pierre, um, she is, you know, she's got a lot of experience. Betsy, you make great points about some of the tweets she has put out there where she just blanket, in a blanket fashion, calls people racist, which is the worst thing you can say about somebody, by the way. Um, but she might have a conflict of interest, and I'm curious as to sort of how this plays out. Uh, her partner, her wife, is a CNN political reporter. So here we go again. Allison. Oh, me. Sorry. I thought you were going to Betsy. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I think it's a conflict of interest. And again, if you look at what she's put on Twitter, uh, it's pretty controversial. And to, to have a, a partner working for CNN, we'll have to see how this plays out. Right? We're going to have to see the press conferences. We're going to have to see the types of questions she gets, types of questions she gets from CNN uh, interviews and how she plays this. This is all going to play out on TV. But of course, it does always play out behind the scenes. But yeah, I mean, it's hard to be to be fair when, when your wife works for CNN. Ah, uh, very good point. All right. Well, one more time, let's show that graphic. My team put this together. Uh, they were up, Mark, late into the night. Matter of fact, some of them didn't go home. They were here putting this <laughs> together. It's a 35-foot Catalina sailboat under sail, Long Island Sound, off to MSNBC, Bon Voyage, Saki Dodge, 225 briefings that we, we all watched. I don't know if we enjoyed, but we all witnessed. Mm -hmm. uh, Jen Saki now moves on to MSNBC. Panel, great discussions as always this morning. Enjoy your weekend. Mark Halpern, Betsy McCoy, thank you so much. The Pierre Pivot, maybe? I think that could I be like the it. one. Maybe? Mark, so. maybe. Kareen, Kareen, maybe. Betsy, maybe. Pivot. We'll have to wait and see. Ooh. Give her a shot. We'll circle back. <laughs> we will circle back. All right. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest-growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.